Hello, my name is Mike Pico. I'm a physician here at the Mayo Clinic in Florida uh, in the Division of Gastroenterology. My main interest is in the area of inflammatory valve disease. And what I mean by that are typically the diseases of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Here at Mayo Clinic, we provide a comprehensive approach to the treatment of these diseases. We have both medical side and surgical side. In the medical side, we have myself, Dr. Kanjemi, nurse practitioner, and on the surgical side, two dedicated colon and rectal surgeons that work very closely with us in the management of patients with this disorder. Uh, it's a very important disorder. It's a chronic disorder requiring significant medical therapies and decision making. And as part of that decision making with you patients, and patients are very important in this process. Here at Mayo Clinic, we also are interested in teaching and also particularly in research. And in research, we have three major areas that we've focused on. The first area is in the area of clinical trials. We're dedicated to providing cutting edge therapies to our patients. And this is important and paramount in our taking care of patients in clinical care. We're also interested in natural history studies. What happens to patients with time with this chronic disease? And finally, what we're very interested in as well is looking at methods of earlier detection of cancer among patients with inflammatory bowel disease, particularly patients with ulcerative colitis. These patients, patients with colitis with time, increase risk of colon cancer results. And because of that, we need to do what's called surveillance colonoscopy. In typical colonoscopy as it exists today, what happens a patient will have will get numerous biopsies to be taken throughout the colon, looking for the early warning signs of cancer. These early warning signs of cancer are called dysplasia, or disorganized tissue. Unfortunately, though, our detection abilities now today aren't very good. We rely on regular light to see and often miss cases or cancer will develop while we're trying to look for it and we miss cancers. And this has led to an important research initiative here at Mayo Clinic. The current studies that we have in place, the major study is a three-site initiative. It's based here at Mayo Clinic in Florida and it involves a study where we actually will look at the colon in patients who have long-standing ulcerative colitis and attempt to stain the colon to enhance our ability to detect these lesions or these early cancerous findings. We use a dye called indigo chlorine. An indigo chlorine dye, when sprayed on the colon, coats the surface and allows us to see it better. And when seeing it better, we hope that will eventually increase our ability to detect precancerous lesions. On top of that, we also, once we find one of these lesions, can actually pass a microscope through the scope the regular colonoscope and look at them under very, very high magnification to begin to sort out what they would look like under the microscope or what the pathologist would see. This is a study we are actively recruiting for right now. We're very interested in patients who happen to have long-standing disease, a disease involving their colon with ulcerative colitis, who are coming for usual colonoscopy. As part of the study, we do a regular colonoscopy, just like you would have on the outside by a gastroenterologist looking at standard white light or regular colonoscopy. We next look at each segment with staining. And what we do is we spray the colon, as I mentioned, attempting to enhance our ability to see. And we're looking among the three Mayo Clinic sites, trying to determine whether this method is feasible and whether we can agree as physicians and endoscopists as to what we're seeing. It's a very important study and we're looking very forward to its completion and should lead to further exploration and research in attempting to improve the quality of life of patients who have ulcerative colitis. Information on the study is available through our websites, online, and various sources, and we're hoping we can encourage patients to participate in this very important study.